In the last lesson, we spoke on explicit intent. In this lesson, we're going to learn about implicit intent. Sometimes you need some functionality that is not really in your application. Probably that functionality is in another app on your user's phone. You can use an implicit intent. Let us have a text. So I can say string text or I'll call it string message is equal to I love Cybrary. So I want to share this message. I am not going to specify what I'm going to use. I could use Bluetooth. I could use Gmail, but I want to share this message. So I will use an implicit intent to allow the user to decide which app he or she desires to use. We would put the implicit intent in the on click. So this is how our implicit intent is going to look like. We create our intent. If you notice, I didn't bother passing in the component that is going to handle this intent the way I did in explicit. The next thing was to set the action. Because we are sharing a text, we are going to use intent action send. Now we want to add some data to this intent. So we use intent.put extra. And the text we're going to add is going to be the message I love Cybrary. Now we set the type of data or just sending a plain text. Let's run this program. If I click it, nothing happens because we forgot to write start activity. Just like the explicit intent, you need this statement. So once I click this, it opens. What should I share with? Bluetooth, message, Gmail. Do I want to copy to clipboard or do I want to save to drive? Sometimes you might have an implicit intent and the user might not have any application to handle that intent. That will cause your application to crash. It's advisable to check if an activity can handle that intent. You do that by calling intent.resolveActivity. If there's an activity that can handle this intent, then start activity. In as much as we have other applications that can handle this intent, you could have an activity in your application that handles a specific intent. Well, let's go to the manifest. Remember, your main activity has an intent filter, which says this activity is the launcher. Let us have our second activity. If we locate the second activity in this manifest, this is it. You can check it using the name. We can put in an intent filter and tell the second activity to handle this type of intents. Action send. So let's add that. So here we have our intent filter. You have the action, the category. You need to add this default category to enable it handle implicit intents and then the type of data. Let's run this program again. Once I say click me, and you see that now Cybrary Android Intents, the application is now suggested. If I click it, it opens second activity immediately because it is second activity I stated that is going to handle this intent. 
So what if I want to display the message? Because as it is now, the intent has been passed to second activity and we can get this message and display it as a toast. The first thing you need to do is intent intent is equal to get intent. So you want to get the intent that was used to open this activity. The next thing you want to get the type of intent. And I will say if the action is action send and the type is not equal to null, let's move on. Then we get the string extra from the intent and which particular string extra, extra text. Remember when we are creating it, we put in an extra, which was the message. Now we want to get the extra and specify what extra we're getting. So after getting it, display the message. Now this will only run if the intent was from action send. So let's try this. Let's run the program. And I click it. I want to use the Cyberry Android intent. So I'll say just once. Hey, I love Cyberry. So you see how implicit intents work. The application might need to do things such as sending an email and the application might not be able to do that. So you send an implicit intent for another application such as Gmail or Yahoo to help you do that. So that is explicit and implicit intents. Hope you have enjoyed the lessons.